haere mai. Welcome to the Maxim Institute podcast. My name is Jason Heal. I'm the communications manager at Maxim Institute, and this is our weekly short-form podcast. These podcasts are released in tandem with our weekly column and are a chance for you to hear in-depth from the column's author about some of the thinking that went into producing their final piece. Today, we talk to Maxim senior researcher Marcus Roberts about his recent column. Marcus, welcome back to the podcast. It's great to have you. Thank you, Jason. Always a pleasure. Yes, never a chore, as they say. Um, we're talking about your latest article for Maxim, The Art of Political Defection, Personal Grievances or Political Realignment. Mm. Now, you wrote this in response to some political maneuvering yes. that's gone on um, in recent weeks. You just want to bring back to mind what those yeah. situations were for us. Yeah, so it was last month, so people probably uh, who aren't political tragics like ourselves <laughs> yeah, that's right. uh, might, may, may have forgotten. Sadly <laughs> invested in everything that happens. <laughs> they might be having a life. Yeah, uh, that's right. <laughs> so they may have forgotten what happened. So we had two defections within the space of about a week. We mm. first of all had the culmination of the uh, Elizabeth Kitty Kitty uh, um, uh, disagreement with her party, the Greens. Mm. They had an internal review about that, and that kind of all came to a head. Yeah, yeah I think the, the the it's still ongoing, or it was still ongoing, and mm. that was part of her concern was mm. that it was taking too long. Oh yeah. Uh, and so obviously there was um, some uh, issues underlying it that we're not privy to. But the upshot was that she decided to become an independent mm. MP. Mm. Uh, and then you had, I think, more shockingly, mm. um, a cabinet minister, a sitting cabinet minister. Um, sorry, she's a sitting minister. She was outside of cabinet. Okay. A, a minister. Yes. Um, uh, Mecca Faitiri. Yes. Deciding that she no longer wanted to be part of the Labour Party. Mm. Mm. It's very odd or very rare, I should say, that you would have a minister of the crown deciding to jump ship. Yes. Particularly this close to an election. Yeah. In an election year, a few months out. That's yeah. right. Um, yeah. So she decided to join uh, Te Pāti Māori. Yes. Uh, and then also decide to be an independent MP for the purposes of some forms of legislation so that she didn't trigger the Waka jumping yeah. legislation. So there was a lot of talk in the news about mm. the Waka jumping yes. legislation. What is it? Just very briefly explain it to us. Yeah, so uh, this is a piece of legislation that uh, um, was put in place in its current iteration by, uh, well, it was pushed forward by Winston Peters, supported by the Labour and Greens party when they were in government mm. uh, in 2017 to 20. Yeah. Um, and so it's really Winston Peters' um, uh, baby. It's designed to prevent uh, MPs from leaving their parties and joining a new party mm. or joining a different party without that uh, old party's consent. Okay. So if they do, the party has the option to trigger this law, which effectively kicks them out of parliament. Okay. So if they're an electorate MP, then then they have to go uh, and stand in a by-election. Okay. To get re-elected. Okay. So it's okay if they have the consent of their party. Yeah. So so to trigger it, either you the leaving MP trigger it by saying, I am leaving this party yes. in a particular form. Yes. And that was the question around uh, Faitiri, yeah. whether she had done that mm. um, or not. But the other way is for the party who you've left to trigger it. Yeah, and so, say, no, we don't w agree with that. We don't want them to sure. do that. So we want to have a by-election or... Yes, or, or if she was a list MP like uh, Elizabeth Kitty is, yes. to say, you're out of parliament, we'll bring in the next person on the list in. Yes. The idea that the party which you were elected under should not be um, uh, disadvantaged by you leaving. Okay. So there's, that's kind of why it's there, but why, why, what's the underlying reason that it's there? So it's to help Winston Peters um, keep discipline in his party yeah. <laughs> so that people don't leave the party. Like I think it's born out of the experience he had in coalition government with National at the end of the 90s. Mm. So this is Jim Bolger, Jenny Shipley, yes. Prime Minister Shipley. Yep. Uh, where there were defections from New Zealand first uh, when he decided to leave the coalition yes. to prop up the national government. Yes. So he wanted another way of preventing his MPs from doing that. Yeah. The, the argument behind it that he says is to keep proportionality. Yeah. So you elect parliament with our party votes, yeah. which determines proportionality of seats per party. Mm. So his argument is that it's undemocratic for people to change the will mm. of the people by 
effectively changing the makeup of parliament. Mm. But this also applies to electorate MPs yes. who aren't on the list, who are elected by people. Yes, directly. Yes, that's yes. right. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, Faiteri, for example, is a, an electorate MP. Yes. Uh, and so the the argument or, or the, the concern there is, well, we don't elect uh, electorate MPs we don't, we don't vote for the party. We yes, vote for the person. That's right, because they directly represent us in Parliament. In that particular geographic yes. location. Yeah. So we vote for X or Y, mm. but we're voting for the person. Mm. And so the argument, perhaps, is that the Walker jumping legislation um, is um, uh, doesn't allow for that differences between list MPs mm. and, and electorate MPs. Mm. Uh, that... L electorate MPs are voted for by the people if they decide to change the banner under which they've voted in under, mm. so move from Labour to, to Party Māori, for example, yeah. uh, then at the next election the electorate will get a chance to, to have, their have their say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Tare Anaturia is an example where, uh, you, again, you had a Labour MP, mm. uh, this was under Helen Clark's government, mm. um, you had a Labour MP who wasn't happy with the foreshore and seabed legislation, yeah. She actually left Parliament voluntarily, triggered a by-election, yeah. and then was voted in again uh, under Te Pāti Māori, oh, wow. or the Māori Party yeah. um, banner. This obviously is before all this waka jumping exactly. stuff happened. So, exactly. So that's ideally how yeah, Parliament I, should I, work, right? Ideally how yeah. it would happen. Yeah. But, the, but the point is, electorate MPs have the chance then to stand again yeah. and get the people to vote. For and them. say, this is my record, yes. this is what I stand for. Yeah. And people say, yeah, we're happy with that, mm. continue, or no, we want to change. Sure. Yeah. And, and I think also to remember that there may be very good principled reasons why people would want to change parties. Mm. Mm. Perhaps they've had a change of heart or mind around a particular policy yeah. that's very important yeah. to them or to their electorate. Yeah. Or maybe the party has changed. Yeah. So yeah. I, I was supporting this party, be, or I was under this party because I thought we believed X. X, Y, Z, but now we're ABC and I can't exactly. in all good conscience stay in the party. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, the trouble is it wasn't, there, there doesn't seem to be a lot of those principled reasons at play here. It's yes. more of a personality or personal um, yeah. concern or grievances yeah. um, here, but, but conceivably there are good reasons mm. why people would want to jump and, ship. And the independence of MPs in some way is constrained by that. Absolutely. Yeah. This is another way that the parties have um, can, can hold this over their MPs mm, mm. to say, um, look, you have to agree with what the party says because otherwise you won't get a very good list ranking yeah. next time. Yeah. Or otherwise we will uh, pr primary you and your electorate yeah. um, and say we'll put someone else up uh, mm. to, to take your electorate seat. Yeah. Um, so you've got that already. And then on top of that, you're saying, and you can't even leave the party Yeah. because if you do, we'll trigger this. A this. And it'll be a by-election or you'll, or you'll just, just be out. out. Yeah. Absolutely. So there is something to be said for the fact that when we vote in MPs, yeah. we don't vote in parties, we vote in MPs, yeah. right? Or parliament is not made up of parties. It's yeah. made up of 120 MPs. Yeah. Yeah. There is something to be said that our par parties are too powerful vis-a-vis -vis our MPs, mm, mm. that we don't have enough MPs treating their job as MPs as important mm, in itself. Mm, mm. You are part of the legislature, you are part of the most important branch of our constitutional framework. Mm. Um, it is not just a sitting room or a waiting room to become a cabinet minister, yeah. which I think uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of... I'm doing my time so that I can get the job. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Or, you know, you will not ever become a cabinet minister because you are too independent minded, yeah. for example. Um, there is uh, examples overseas, Westminster examples overseas, particularly in the UK, mm. where there is a much greater history and um, experience and, and, and the expectation that MPs will be independent of their parties mm. more than they are in New Zealand. Yeah. And the great example, I think, is the Brexit. Um, uh, legislation that the government of the day had real problems trying to get passed mm, mm. because their MPs would Were vote against cross them. cross party cross cross, part, cross the floor. floor yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so and, then and they don't have list no it's purely list. electorate MPs yeah. there. and yeah. then you saw a backlash against some of those MPs who got voted out yeah. because they the, voted against the Brexit legislation that's and right. so so they the the system worked in that sense that they were the, the people were represented. Yeah, the people were represented, but also the MPs were able to do what they thought was right. Yeah, yeah. As MPs, not merely as, as 
as as voting automatons for their party. Yeah, yeah, which is something that we need to consider here going into our own election. Yeah, a good start would be getting rid of the Walker jumping legislation. Yeah. I mean, no one likes it apart from Winston Peters. <laughs> uh, the Greens didn't trigger it for Elizabeth Kitty Kitty yeah. because they have a they were opposed to it. Yeah, despite voting for it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. So uh, I guess the thing that we want to take away from this is mm. that MPs and uh, in a representative democracy should represent their constituents. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> MPs should matter. Yeah. Someone yeah. think of the MPs, please. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks, Marcus. No Good problem. thoughts. <laughs> Cheers. Now let's hear from Marcus as he reads his column. Anyone can rat, but it t- takes a certain ingenuity to re rat. So said Winston Churchill regarding the first 25 years of his political career, which saw him elected as a Conservative MP, jump ship to become a Liberal cabinet minister, defect to be an independent, and eventually return as a Conservative MP. We've yet to see that level of political manoeuvring in New Zealand, but recent weeks have seen some high profile political defections. First, Elizabeth Kerikeri left the Green Party to become an independent MP. But even more shocking was the earlier defection of Meki Faiteri from Labour to Te Pāti Māori slash independent. A sitting Minister of the Crown, albeit one sitting outside of Cabinet, does not lightly change parties. There seems to be clear personal reasons for these decisions. Kitty Kitty felt the Green Party had made it untenable for her to continue to work with it, admits accusations of bullying, a missent WhatsApp message, and an internal review. Well, according to commentator Bryce Edwards, Faiteri failed to point to any substantive policy or philosophical differences with the party she had represented for nearly 10 years. Edwards thinks that her decision has more to do with Faiteri getting overlooked in reshuffles. All such personal conflicts are ephemeral, but these political musical chairs may also help shed light on underlying political dynamics. When Faiteri announced her move, she stated, Māori political activism is part of being Māori. I'm acknowledging my responsibility to it, and it's calling me home. According to Faiteri, the home of Māori political activism is not the Labour Party. But for so long, the Labour Party was seen as the natural and only home of Māori electorally. Only six years ago, the Labour Party won all seven Māori seats. The electorate's concerns and interests can change. So too do political parties. After campaigning to abolish the Māori seats, National is contesting at least some of them for the first time since 2002. Kitty Kitty's departure can also be placed within a broader civil war within the Green Party, between its social justice wing and some more environmentally focused constituency. Kitty Kitty belonged to the former and seemed to have lost her struggle with party leader James Shaw. Shaw is aligned with the environmental faction, and while he has seen off Kitty Kitty, the environmental wing seems to be weakening within the, part, within the party. Kitty Kitty's supporters may well have the last laugh. The shifting electoral alignment can be seen elsewhere on the spectrum. The working classes are increasingly being taken for granted in our politics. No one sitting today in Parliament is working class. Yet half a century ago, fully a fifth of our MPs had a working class background. This is not just a New Zealand phenomenon. One of the reasons for Boris Johnson's unexpected crushing victory in 2019 is that he tapped into at least some working class voters' concerns. Remember, MPs represent the people who voted for them and therefore must prioritise the needs of their constituents. Instead of focusing solely on personal grievances, it would be more productive to work towards addressing the concerns of all groups. Thanks for listening to the Maxim Institute podcast. If you'd like to hear more from us and keep up with the rest of our research and analysis of politics and policy in New Zealand, you can sign up on the homepage of our website to get our monthly forum email and invitations to future Maxim Institute events. You can search and subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. From the team at Maxim, Mate Wa, goodbye for now. <laughs>